Hey, it's Freiberger here, and I'm celebrating 35 years with my Super B. Can you even believe it? To celebrate, I'm selling t-shirts. You can buy these at shop.davidfreiberger.com. But I thought I would do a video here about 10 things you never knew about my Super B. Now the thing is this car has been around for a long time. It's been a lot of magazines and a lot of TV shows and was in an after school special back in the 80s and stuff like that. And there's been a lot of stories told about it. So for my 35th anniversary, I wanted to think of some things that probably you'd never heard before. You might have heard of some of these if you're really, really hardcore, but I kind of doubt it. So here we go. I had to write them down because man, these are some of these are kind of obscure. Okay, here's a good one. So you know, this was my first car. I bought it in 1983 and uh, I drove it when I was 15 years old before I even had a driver's license. And of course I was a juvenile delinquent. Here's the best story about that. I put two dents in this car myself at the same spot. There was a street in my neighborhood that was a tight U-turn and I used to come down it and hit the parking brake, well hit the parking brake and slide all the way around the turn and then release the brake and keep going in a, in a big nice 180. Well one time I was doing that in the rain and I slid into a Volvo station wagon coming up the other way and put a dent right ahead of the left rear tire. Another time not having learned my lesson, I did the exact same thing and I had a uh, power steering pump in the trunk which flew over and put an inside dent on the right rear quarter panel. So two dents in the same spot from the same juvenile delinquency. Next thing, I only ever won two street races with this car. I know it's an embarrassing admission, the car's never really been as fast as I wanted it to be. I beat one car that was a 3D3 Dart and another guy with a 350 Pontiac in a 71 like Le Mans. And uh, so, yeah, only two street races won. It really wasn't that fast back in the day when it had the 3D3 in it and 323 gears and stuff like that. So this car was my first car, but I didn't have my first date in it. And here's why. It broke down on the way. I was 17 years old, had my first date with a 15 year old, and uh, I was on my way over to her house to pick her up and the ignition module on this thing died. And uh, I towed it back to my parents' house and it sat for months because I couldn't figure out how to get it fixed. It wasn't actually the module, it was the magnetic pickup inside the distributor. And I just did not have the wherewithal to troubleshoot that at the time. And so I ended up taking uh, my dad's station wagon on my first date. Uh, let's see. Oh, the Super B was once in an ad for Willwood Brakes. Go back into Mopar Muscle, Car Craft, Hot Rod, popular hot rodding magazines like that circa 1994 and you'll find a one-third page vertical ad for Willwood Brakes and it's got a really cool rear angle view of my car. That is number four on the list of 10 things you never knew about my car. Here's number five. This thing is factory go mango orange. The interior was factory burnt orange. When I got it, somebody had vinyl painted the whole thing and it looked terrible. The interior that's in it now is a mishmash of parts that were taken out of another Super B parts car and stuff that I had uh, recovered when we restored the car in the mid 90s and I converted it all to black. Everything in the interior is now black, there's nothing painted, but it has crossed my mind just to make it a little bit more unique and to change it up some to bring it back to burnt orange at some point. It also has a bench seat in it now and I might put the buckets in the console back in it at some point. That's number five. Number six. So you may have heard the stories about how this car was used in an after school special that was directed by Henry Winkler and they ended up denting the thing right here. As a matter of fact, these bumpers are also off of a parts car that we got from that movie. Some chopper flying over. Uh, and when it was painted, here's the tech tip that, or the fun fact that you probably haven't heard. It was painted by a guy called Dwayne McKinney who is a longtime Bonneville Land Speed Racer. He's actually a 49er. He was at the very first Bonneville Nationals organized for hot rods racing on the salt flats in 1949. And uh, I didn't really know who he was at the time aside from all of the photos and everything that were all over the shop. The shop was called Paint and Place in Glendale, California. It's not there anymore. Okay, now we are down to one, two, three, four, five, six, number seven. I have had five different engines in this car since I've owned it. When I bought it, it had a 383 in it, which was, it's a factory 383 car. Oddly enough, even in 1983, it didn't have the original engine in it. I do not own the numbers matching engine for this car. So it had that original 383 in it, and then I did a rebuild of it in high school, 
And then that engine came back out. And as a matter of fact, that uh, crank and rods and block are now in our crop duster, my 1970 Plymouth duster. Uh, after that, I put a 440 in it. And I remember that 440 was a factory six pack block that I got out of a challenger from a guy in the recycler. Remember the recycler classified ads? If you're from SoCal back in the eighties, I bought that 440 HP block and, and put it in the car. And I still have that as well. And then it went in the Dick Landy Hemi. And then I put that out and reconfigured it myself. It's still got the Dick Landy uh, short block and heads, but I changed the intake and the cam and the valve springs and stuff like that. And so that's version two of the Hemi. So to review, 383 one, then I rebuilt the 383, then I put in a 440, then the Dick Landy Hemi, and then the Freiburger version of the Dick Landy Hemi. Five engines. Okay, fact number seven. Sorry, eight that you hadn't heard before. I told you that I rebuilt that 383 in high school auto shop. Well, we had just gotten to the point of being ready to fire the thing home, fire the thing up, and I was walking home from school and I got hit by a car and it shattered this arm. I don't know, you probably can't see the scar in the video, but I've got a big plate in this arm. And uh, so I was unable to finish it. So my buddies actually got the thing running for me and drove it home when I was in the hospital for like eight days recovering from getting hit by that car. And so I never actually got to fire up my very first engine rebuild in the Super B by myself. It was done by my buddies who took the thing home after I was in the hospital. Okay, keeping track, this is number nine. I think this is a true fact. My memory may be failing me after 35 years. I believe I've never received a moving violation in the Super B. I've never had a speeding ticket or a stop sign ticket or anything like that in this car, but I did get an equipment violation. I've told the story before about how I was pulled over once at the street races and got out of a ticket by, uh, by explaining to the cop how nitrous systems work. It's kind of a funny story in itself, but it's been told a bunch. Uh, another time I got pulled over and I didn't get a moving violation, but he wrote me up for altered suspension, no front license plate, and I like a tail light or something like that. So I fixed all that stuff, drove the thing to downtown LA to have the thing inspected to clear the ticket, and I walk in with my paperwork and I'm like, I have my car here to get inspected for the you know, equipment violations. And the guy went and signed it off and handed it back to me. I was like, you're not gonna look at the car? And, and the guy said to me, well, did you fix it? I said, yeah. He's like, would you have brought it down here to show it to me if you hadn't? He's like, no. He's like, why should I waste my time looking at it? So that was the last ticket. Okay, last one, number 10 of things that you didn't know. I currently own four hoods for this car. There is the original steel power bulge hood. I have a fiberglass version of the power bulge hood. And then I also have a steel Coronet 500 hood that I put a fiberglass Hemi scoop on. And then there's this one, which is a custom made fiberglass hood with a fiberglass Hemi scoop. So four total hoods on the car. Now the controversy has been, should I leave the hood black like this or should it be orange like it is in the t-shirt? When Rob Martin designed this shirt at the 25th anniversary of the car, uh, it had the orange steel hood on it with the fiberglass orange Hemi hood scoop on it. And now I've got this fiberglass hood on it which is painted matte black. The guys at Diversify Creations in Detroit handled that for me. And so should I leave it black or should I paint it orange like the shirt? You tell me. And if you want one of the shirts, once again, shop davidfreiberger.com. My last name is spelled F-R-E-I-B-U-R-G-E-R, -E -E and thanks a lot for watching.